Chapter 38 Salt I take refuge from the devil the accursed, and I begin with the name of God in this verse. Saad, a letter of the Arabic language of which God alone knows what it truly means. But the scholar Ibn Abbas, may the Lord be pleased with him, offered this meaning indeed. This letter means repeat the Qur'an to distinguish between faith and disbelief. I swear by the Qur'an, the disbelievers are always disputing and hostile. We destroyed many former generations who called out for help, but their calls were futile. The Meccans do not heed this example and find it so strange. God has sent them a prophet from amongst themselves to guide them to faith. They say he is just a sorcerer. How can he claim there is but one God? They choose to ignore him, saying, he says things so odd. And their leaders heard Muhammad say, worship no God but God alone. So they told others, stay away from this man. Do not listen to him. Stick to the gods of your own. Muhammad is making it all up. Ignore this one God claim. It wasn't mentioned in the last religion. Why should he get such a claim? Why would he get the message and not an elder or nobler man? The Meccans may doubt my warnings, but have not tasted the punishment firsthand. Do they have power of prophethood and scripture that they can bestow on who they choose? Do they control the heavens and earth and everything between them too? Can they climb up to the heaven and bring down from themselves a revelation? they will surely be destroyed, just like other disbelieving nations. The people of Noah, Ad and Pharaoh rejected their messengers too. So did the forest-dwelling people of Shu'aib and those of Lot and the people of Thamud. They were deservedly struck with punishment for rejecting the messengers who were sent and the Meccans who deny you wait for the blast of judgment day that they cannot circumvent. And when the disbelievers heard the verses of the Qur'an, informing they would have a book of deeds, they said, Lord, give us some punishment before the day of reckoning, but they did so mockingly. Prophet, bear their words and rejection with patience, and remember David who always worshipped me. We made mountains and birds join him in worship. They echoed his praise in unity. We strengthened his kingdom, gave him wisdom, and a powerful way with his speech. And now we will tell you the story of the two men engaged in a lawsuit, who went to his prayer sanctuary. They came upon him, and he was frightened. They came to make clear his erroneous desire, as David was already married to several women, but there was another man's wife he wished to acquire. The men were angels in human form, sent to show his situation outside of himself, and one said, This man has ninety-nine ewes, and I only have one and nothing else. Yet he wishes to take this one from me, and overpowered me with clever speech. And David said, he has certainly wronged you. Many associates treat each other unfairly, except those who believe and do good deeds. But such people are a rarity. And the angels began to leave, and one said, David has passed judgment on himself. And then David realized that we had been testing him, and so he fell to the floor to repent. We forgave him his misdeed and will reward him with high rank on return to us. And we said, David, we have given you mastery on earth. Between people you must fairly judge. Do not follow your desires. They may take you from God's path, and such folk will be punished on the day. We did not create heaven and earth without purpose, even if disbelievers think it that way. They will suffer the fire for thinking such. Should we treat sinners equal to those who do good, and would we treat reckless lawbreakers the same as those aware of God, those who've understood? This is a blessed scripture sent to you, Muhammad, for the wise ones to ponder and take heed. We gave David to Solomon, an excellent servant, who always turned to God indeed. And we gave him a lesson too as a reminder, as one day Solomon was preparing to wage a war, and he was inspecting all the horses brought to him, and of their grace and power he was in awe and he thought they were fine creatures, and he inspected them until the close of day, and then when the time for Asr prayer passed, he remembered that he had forgotten to pray. So he began to sacrifice the horses, giving the meat in God's name to feed the poor, as he wished to atone for his forgetting, and being taken by the horses' worldly law. We tested Solomon again, as we took his kingdom from him, as he had married blinded by desire, 
he married a woman who committed idolatry behind his back, and he was none the wiser. And we had given him a ring that gave him power, and one day he gave it to her to keep safe. But we made a jinn take it from her, so Solomon lost his power, and we put another jinn in his place. We placed that jinn upon his throne, and made it so people believed it was Solomon sat there. But we forgave him, and returned his kingdom to him, when he turned to us repentant in prayer. Lord forgive me and grant me power, like none after me will attain. You are truly the most generous provider, so his request was one we entertained. We gave him power over wind, which blew as he asked it too, and gave him power over jinn that dive and build, and chained for him rebellious devils too. And we told him, This is our gift, O Solomon. You may choose which of the jinn to set free. He will be rewarded in the hereafter by being brought close to me. Remember to our servant Job, who turned to his Lord to cry, and he said, You have sent Satan to afflict me with suffering and make me tired. So he said, Strike the ground with your foot, and water will gush out for you to drink. And he drank and bathed from this water, and we made it a relief for him of everything. And we returned his family to him, and gave him even more, a sign of our mercy, and, for those who understand, of our power to restore. And we made an easy way out for him, of the oath he made against his wife, as she had said something displeasing about God, so he swore to lash her a hundred times. But we told him to simply take some blades of grass and touch her a hundred times with them. He was truly patient in adversity, an excellent servant, who turned to God time and time again. Remember our servants Abraham, Isaac and Joseph, men of understanding and deep religious insight. We cause them to be devoted to us through remembrance of the next life. There they will have the highest station in God's eyes. With them he is truly pleased. And remember too Ishmael, Elijah and Dulchifl. They were truly good indeed. This is a lesson of the end of those who do good. They will have a blissful destination. The gates of heaven will be open for them. They are the best of all creation. They'll be comfortably seated and will always have abundant food and drink to consume. Well-matched partners and told, this is what you were promised on the day of reckoning for your belief and the good you used to do. For them our provision will never end, but the sinners will have the worst return, hell to burn in, an evil place to stay, it will be theirs, it is what they have earned. They will taste the evil in hell, a scalding liquid dark and foul, and other such things causing endless pain, such as the drink that rips through their bowels. And after the first group heads into the fire, God will say, here is another group to join you, and those in hell will say, may God make it more difficult for them as they burn in the fire too. Those people were the ones who made up false religions, and we only followed the path they set. Lord, they were the ones who led us to hell, so give them and Satan double punishment. And the disbelievers will also say, where are the ones who called themselves believers, the ones we considered lowly and poor? They were the ones we used to laugh at and regarded ourselves over them with grandeur. We cannot see them in hell. Our eyes must have missed them. This is how the disbelievers will be. Say, prophet, I only give warning. There is no God but God. He is all-powerful, the Almighty. He is the Lord of the heavens, Lord of the earth and everything in between. He is the one who is most forgiving. He indeed is the Almighty. The message I bring is a mighty one, yet you pay this message no attention. I had no previous knowledge of the angels who asked God of his sending Adam to earth. I did not know of their apprehension. It has only been made clear to me that I am sent to give you warning. God said to the angels, I will create man, Adam, from clay. I will shape him and breathe my spirit into him. Bow in respect before man, my creation. And the angels did so, but not Iblis, a jinn. He was too proud. And God said, what prevents you from showing respect to what I made with my hands? Why are you not bowing down? Do you think yourself too mighty and high? And Iblis responded, I am better than him. You made him of clay and me from fire, so God removed him from the heavenly company he was in. God said, leave this group, the angelic host. You are banished from here and rejected. My rejection will follow you until judgment day, when all my creatures are resurrected. 
And Iblis said, Lord, grant me respite from death and your punishment until the day when all are raised. And God said, you will have respite until the first trumpet is blown, calling people up from their graves. And Iblis said, I swear by your might and by your favor, I will mislead people from the path to you, except the believers who are righteous in faith of Adam's sons, your loyal servants who are true. And God said, No, I am the truth, I speak the truth. You and your followers will be fuel for hell. Tell them, prophet, I do not ask you for any reward for the messages from God I tell. This is simply a warning for people. I do not claim to be what I am not, and in time you will surely come to know the truth of what I have brought.